and the climax of the film, setting the names to the music right. for it to be easier to remember. Right. Tell me about this. Well, there wasn't a way uh, to re there wasn't a way to write things down in the camp. So the, as they they explain that in the film. Um, this was the most difficult piece for me, and because it has to be so historically accurate and to contain the names. And so I did a lot of research into the cantorial, uh, the whole cantorial tradition, and listened to a lot of recordings. And the recordings go back to the beginning of recordings, like around the turn of the century. And you can hear some of these. Like there's, there was one I'd listened to that was a, from a Titanic memorial, and it had a El Mole Rakamin being sung at the memorial. So where were you getting where were you getting these recordings? Um? I was finding them on the inter all okay. the internet. The internet. I mean, if you're doing research for music, the internet is a brilliant place to work. So I was listening. To, I was doing a lot of research, listening to a lot of recordings, and. I was working with a cantor uh, and his wife, Judith Clerman, and the cantor's name is Bruce Cohen. He was, a can he was the cantor at the Brooklyn Heights Synagogue in New York, and Judith Clerman is a well-known New York conductor and music director. And they're both authorities in, uh, in Jewish uh, tradition, in Hebrew, in the Shiva teachings and teachings of the Torah. So they were a good guy. And Bruce showed me where all the knowledge was and where the modes were and how the, how the, and how the prayers are built in a certain way. And then Francois decided that he would create uh, four different scenes in that, in the Song of Names. So you would hear it in the uh, shul in Stoke Newington the first time. That's sung by Daniel Mutlu, who's a New York cantor at the Central Synagogue in New York. And we had to find him. I had to actually cast him because I needed a, a, a cantor who could sing beautifully for the film, but also act that scene and be an actor and be you know in Stoke Newington in 1951. And uh, Judith knew uh, Daniel from Juilliard, actually. He was a voice student. So he was, he was somebody that I could work with musically. And I could write a piece that came from my, from my remembrance of uh, the synagogue, because I grew up in the synagogue. My father was a relig very religious man, and I grew up hearing all the great cantors, especially in the holy, uh, you know, high holy days, high holidays. And the different <coughs> cantors would come from, we were in Toronto, but they would come from the States and from Buffalo, Detroit. They'd come to Toronto and they'd sing in the synagogue. So you hear all these great artists singing. And I knew that sound, and it was exactly the sound of this film. So I was really trying to recreate that with Daniel Lulu. That was the idea. And then what Francois was, he recommended for the scene was to show that, do it with three violins. So there was one in the concert hall in present, and then there's one flashing back to Treblinka, and one, the other one to the asylum for Joseph, and then the cantor coming back in from Stoke Newington. So, and that became, the way that scene was constructed. And that was done with Francois and myself working together to create